work-life balance. Every time I speak at an event or at a conference, I always get asked, what can I do to create work-life balance in my life? So today's whole episode is on work-life balance, what that means to you and how to achieve it. Hi, I'm Deborah Peters. Welcome back to The Deborah Peters Show. Thank you for being here. Definitely subscribe and give me a thumbs up if you like the content. There's also a little bell next to the subscribe button that you can click and then the next time I upload, which is five days a week, you'll get new content alerts from me. All right, work-life balance. What is this anomaly that so many people seem to be searching for. First of all, I think it's definitely an attitude that comes from this concept that there is no balance, right? When you're searching for something, there's always a flip side to that coin. So when you're searching for love, it's usually because you feel lonely. When you're searching for ways to make more money, it's typically because you think you don't have enough. When we're searching for work-life balance, it typically comes from this notion that our lives are out of balance. What's interesting to me about this question when I get asked is 99.9% .9 of the time it's asked by women. And so I'll comment on that as we roll through this episode. All right, so first of all, work-life balance. If you are seeking work-life balance, <laughs> there isn't such a thing. It does not exist. So when you stop chasing something that doesn't exist, you really truly cut yourself some slack and your life starts to get easier. Now, why do I say that it doesn't exist and there's no such thing? Well, simply put, if you talk to any high achiever, if you talk to any accomplished artist of any kind, whether they're in the performing arts, maybe they're a painter, a sculptor, whatever it is they're creating, they will tell you that there is absolutely no work-life balance, that it really comes down to focus. And if you've been watching my channel, I have done a video on focus. You can just click back through and you'll find how to achieve greater levels of success in your business through the tool of focus. So no, there isn't a work-life balance. And yes, it really does come down to focus to the point of obsession, where you eat, sleep, breathe, drink, and ooze whatever it is that you're creating until you take it to fruition, until you take it to the nth degree, until you take it out to that place of completion. So no, there's, there isn't a, a balance on that. It's, it's an all or none. You're fully in or you're not in at all. Anyone that has accomplished great heights in their lives in any particular area will tell you that the way they got there was truly through focus and obsession. Now, yes, you can go into holding patterns on things where let's say it's fitness and there's a point in your period in your life where you're obsessed with fitness. I can share this with you. I used to own a gym. So everything in my life was, uh, I was obsessed with fitness. Worked out multiple times a day sometimes, just go in and knock out a body part, go back in when I had a few minutes and do another body part. Or maybe it was teaching a class in the morning and then doing a weight workout at night but I was obsessed with fitness. Then there came a point in my life where I was really building my speaking business and my coaching business and my consulting work. So fitness wasn't an obsession anymore, but it, was, it became more of a, a holding pattern. It was a lifestyle of staying fit, staying healthy, feeling good, staying flexible, that sort of thing. 
Now, when it comes to your business, being obsessed with your outcomes is really the key to get to that next level. And as a part of that obsession, there's a point of being able to let go and allow. And that's not what this video about is about. This video is truly about work-life balance, does it exist, and what to do about it. Well, first of all, I'm going to tell you to just kind of completely take your focus off of this idea because it doesn't exist. And instead, give yourself permission to be obsessed about your business, to be obsessed about your happiness, to be obsessed about your health. Give yourself permission for that to be okay. We cannot be all things to all people. We cannot be all things to our business. In the beginning, if you're launching a business or you're a solopreneur or an entrepreneur, you may find that you're doing a lot of everything. And then it comes to a point when to be sustainable, you have to start automating things and le leveraging your systems and your processes through other people. You have to start hiring people because there comes a point of no return where you just can't do it all. And this also happens when you're managing teams and you're leading teams, being willing to let go and to have other people that are smarter than you on your team take care of business. Can you still be obsessed about the end goal? Absolutely. In fact, you will be obsessed if you have any kind of emotional connection to that end goal. What fascinates me about this subject is that, like I said, when I'm speaking at events and conferences, when I'm coaching executives and teams, I often get asked the question about work-life balance by women. Now, I've been doing some pondering on this because I've, I can't think of one time that I had a man in the audience say, put up his hand and say, can you touch on work-life balance? I can never, I cannot think of one single time. It's always been women that have been asking that question. So I've been studying this little phenomenon <laughs> to understand where is this coming from? And I've deduced it down I really believe that it has to do with how we program our children based on gender between zero and seven. So depend, and there's no right or wrong, I'm not judging, I'm just saying that all thought, all behavior, all emotion, all limiting beliefs, all expansive beliefs or relationship to self comes from that zero to seven imprint years when we're being raised, loved, fed, watered, schooled by our parents and our communities and our religions and our environments and our nannies and our grandparents and all of the people in our world that have influence over us. So in that gender programming, we make determinations about what's expected of us as we go through life. And then comes the time period of the modeling age, which is basically age seven to 14. Who are we modeling? Are we modeling our mother, for example, that is all self-sacrificing and puts herself last and always takes care of everyone else. And if there's a morsel or a crumb left over, then she takes care of herself. Or are we modeling the self-absorbed parent that never has time or energy or attention for anyone other than themselves or something in between? The interesting part of this is gender programming goes back to an age old time of survival. So the men were the hunter gatherers, the women were the birthers, the, the 
meal prep, the homemaker people, and it was a very clear cut world. The, the whole industrial age was all about that. It was very clear cut on who had what role. In fact, I remember dating someone from a particular religion that we would have these conversations about equality, like how does our relationship work in terms of values and are we equal to one another? And his response was very cleverly put, where he would say, we're equal, but we have different roles. And I'm like, ah, okay. What you're really saying is, you do this because of your gender and I do this because of my gender, but we're still equal. And it's like, okay, but what if that's not what I want to do? What if I'm not locked into this framework of having to look or be or live a certain way because of my gender. So I, in fact, I have, I have friends and family members that have programmed their children differently based on their gender. So the boys get money related programming and the girls get shopping related programming. And it just fascinates me that this has gone on in society for so long that it's a norm. And so when I'm working with high level professional women and they are still running this belief system that they have to be it all. They have to be this top earner, this top performer, keep it all together, nails, hair, makeup, body, clothing, education, and then still be soccer mom, dinner prep, you understand what I'm saying to you? Men don't think like that. Men don't worry about these kinds of things in general. And I'm not saying that some men aren't engaged. So that's not my point. I'm giving a general perspective so that you can maybe start to look at how you're setting yourself up for failure and disappointment if you're trying to create this non-existent work-life balance in your world. What else is interesting on this is women have a tendency to conform to societal norms or to the status quo, meaning to the men in their lives and how that man wants them to look, behave, act, think, show up. You know, we've all heard of the trophy wife and the arm candy. And certainly that can work both ways. The point I'd like to make here is that to give yourself permission to focus so much on your outcomes that you become obsessed and to not beat yourself up for being obsessed with something that completely inspires you and you're totally enthusiastic about. Beyond that, give yourself the space to have time to do the things you want to do on a person level, on a relationship level, on a health level, and also to have unscheduled time. So as much as there's this huge obsession that you're allowing yourself to connect into and ride the wave of, on the flip side of it is you're giving yourself unstructured, unscheduled time where you're not looking at the clock and going, I got to get on to the next because it's like, ch -ch -ch -ch, right? With that done, then you have the freedom as well to even become more creative. I believe the more we're allowing ourselves to connect into our imagination and our creativity as, as adults in a similar fashion that we did as a child, then actually the more we can get done in our business life and the more we can accomplish in our business world with less effort with more joy, with more enthusiasm, with greater levels of self-awareness of what it actually took to get to where you want to be. 
And that enables you, above all else, to stay in present time. Because when we are present, this is the gift, you see. The gift is now. There's no yesterday and there's no tomorrow. There's just right now. And whatever is right now happening in your world is where your focus is. So be really aware of what you let yourself focus on. All right, there you have it. Thank you for joining me for this episode of The Deborah Peters Show. Share it with your tribe, definitely subscribe, and I will see you back here tomorrow. Ciao.